Schumacher XP2260 not charging? Well, I don't have a broken one today, but I've taken mine apart to show you how you can easily fix this problem. Now, in most cases, the reason it's not charging is that the original flip-out power socket here is broken and no longer making contact. So, that fitting is so unreliable, they don't even make it available anymore, and it's difficult to find. So with no problem, we're just going to replace it with a standard AC socket. You can use any kind of AC socket that you have available. This one this one came from an old PC power supply, and it's just like what you're looking at right here. You can use a two-wire or a three-wire. It doesn't matter. You can use a different style plug. It doesn't matter. So here are the steps involved. The first thing you have to do is remove the battery. So here's the battery door. There are six tiny screws on the battery door. And once the door is off, you remove the battery. And there are two, two of these screws on the battery. Now mine had Phillips head fitting on one side, 516s fitting on the other side. 516s is about the same as 8 millimeter, so you could use an 8 millimeter as well. Now you notice that I've segregated these screws into one container. So that makes it very easy to get this right when we put it back together. So there's the screws from the battery door and the battery. Here's my battery. Now the next thing you have to do is to remove this base. Since there are so many screws in this unit, it's important to make, make a chart of what comes out of where. So when you're taking the case apart, the first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew the handle. And there are two very short screws here holding the handle in. And they're in the case, in this can, the two short ones, those. Next we have two short silver screws right below the handle. So they would be these. And then below that we have six longer silver screws. And see, short one, longer one. Now it gets tricky. This rubber base has to be unscrewed. And according to the chart that we made, there are four medium black screws in the rubber base. So that would be these. And once you get the base off, there's two hidden screws way down here that you can't see until you take the base off. And there are also long silver screws like this. So see, it's actually been quite a while since I took this apart and started this video. But I'm, I have this chart, so I'll, it'll tell me how to put it back together correctly. So always make a chart when you take something apart like this. Okay, we've got it apart. Now it's pretty easy to unscrew and remove the broken power socket. How are we going to fit the new power socket into the back cover? Well, the tool that you're going to need, at least to put in this kind of socket, is an oscillating tool. So this is an oscillating tool I bought from Harbor Freight probably going on 10 years ago when they first came out at Harbor Freight. I paid about $20 for it. Now they go for about $13. Just 
Chicago Electric plug-in oscillating tool. If you don't have one, not the best oscillating tool ever made, definitely worth the $13 they're charging for it today. Then the next thing you're going to need, there are all kinds of blades for this tool. What you're going to need is a wood plastic blade. You can see this one's been quite used. It's marked wood plastic. The teeth on a wood plastic blade are coarser. The teeth on a metal blade are much finer. The metal blade will tend to melt the plastic. This will just cut through it like butter. So you'll be looking at a job saying, I'm never going to be able to do this. But when the oscillating tool is here, it's really just a bzzit, bzzit, chops away all the plastic that's in your way and you can put this right in. Now, as I recall, it fits perfectly in one direction. The other direction is going to require just a little filing with a file to make it fit. Honestly, this turns what seems like an impossible, difficult job into a matter of seconds. Well worth it. So between the tool and the blade, it's about a $20 investment. You'll, you'll never regret it. The next tool you're going to need is a drill. Any old drill will do. We've got to drill two holes to put the new screws in. Now, before you actually screw this new socket together, if we look in here, it would be very difficult to solder the wires in there. So when you rob a socket from a discarded piece of equipment, take the wires with it. Leave yourself some pigtails. So when I took this one apart, there were three pigtails. Didn't need to bring in the green, but it was there, so I left it. We have two pigtails on the power socket, a blue one and a brown one. Polarity does not really matter because this is what rectifies the AC, turns it into DC. We have 15 volts coming out on this end. This is your charge voltage. This is just a standard little power supply. Polarity doesn't matter in this case. It's only a two wire non-polarized connection. So you connect one of the leads to black, and that would be the load, and the other lead to white, which is the neutral. You can use wire nuts to connect them. Now, in the rare event that the unit still doesn't charge, after you've replaced the socket, then you can measure your charge voltage right on this jack. Now it's difficult to see from here, but it's a 15 volt charge. It's marked right here on the PCB. If you unscrew this board, you'll see it right away. And positive is on the red wire. And negative is here on the black wire. So you would put the positive probe here, the negative probe there, plug in your power cord, turn it on, and you should get 15 volts right here. If you're not getting 15 volts, the power cord is plugged in, the socket is all wired up, then you would have a problem on this board. Now, just to point out a couple of things, this is a little power supply. It's like you would see in all sorts of small electronic equipment. There is an AC line fuse here. This fuse is there to prevent a fire. It would blow if usually when one of these bridge rectifiers shorts out. So if one of these bridge rectifiers shorts out, if there were a lightning strike or something that, that took out the power supply, this fuse would be open. I'm just pointing it out. It's not likely you're ever going to have any kind of problem like this. And I'm sure there's 
plenty of videos on the on the web showing you how to repair little power supplies like this. I've never had to do it in this model. It's always been that power socket back here. But I'm just pointing it out. Should have 15 charge volts right here. So it's really a very straightforward job, provided you have an oscillating tool. I don't think you can get this exact one anymore. This one is item number six five. Here it is. This one is item number six five seven hundred. I'm sure they have a replacement model today. There's really nothing to this. It probably took me almost as long to make this video as it does to affect the repair. So I hope this helps someone. Hope you get your Schumacher charging again. We've had at least a dozen inquiries about this procedure. It's not that difficult. Let us know how you make out. It'll help others. So thanks for watching. Please leave a comment.